Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm gonna go over and we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on a hydrocolator that I did this weekend on a live stream. Now, this guy here, come to find out there was a fuse that was popped. Well, guys, fuses always pop for a reason. So, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at why the fuse popped, deep dive. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have this little guy right here. This is a Richmar hydrocolator. It is basically a heater for physical therapy. Now, in a live stream, I went through and I did a quick troubleshooting on it and come to find out that there was a little fuse which popped, it provides 24 volts AC power to this little control panel right here. Now this little control panel, it can have either AC or DC as its power supply. So I put it all back together and the original fuse was a half an amp. So I put a two amp fuse in it. Yeah, you know, it's either gonna be a transformer down there or it's gonna be the control panel up here. One of them is going to fail and transformers really don't fail that often. So the likelihood is gonna be that this little control panel right here has got some bigger issues. So let's go ahead. First things first, I'm going to snap a photo of all the cables so that I know exactly what wire goes where. Absolutely critical to do this step. All right, so now that I've got my photo of the connector, now I've peeled pretty safe about disconnecting all the leads. And let's go ahead and take a look nice and close for what's going on inside this guy. Okay guys, this is the control panel up close and personal. It's got four captive screws, which are kind of nice because it makes it very easy for me to take it out. They're a little bit knurled, so I use them like thumb screws. And um, there are some standoffs on the back. So I'm just gonna make sure that those stay on pretty well. You can see that these type of control panels, they normally just slide in and out. Somebody got a little creative and put some sort of adhesive on here. And it looks like it's uh, like poly polystyrene, something like that. Almost like Gorilla Glue. And that's gonna make things a little more complex. Still doable though. Um, you can just chip it off. I'm being rather careful. And the goal is to get this guy to slide off Come on, I'm trying to chip away all this glue. So one of the things that you should know is anytime that you have a device that takes AC power in and it, it has some sort of computer to it, it needs to convert that AC power over to DC because computers run off DC. So that means that there is some sort of rectifier inside this component and rectifiers are semiconductors. So semiconductors almost always fail in a short, which means that that is probably why there's some mystical smoke that is being let out of my device. This is definitely being a little bit of a challenge. There it goes, there it goes. I had to break through some of that foam that's up in there. What a pain. <sighs> Whoever did this, you guys are not my favorite people right now. Let's see, I got some more on this side. Oh yeah, look at it. <laughs> okay, there's one side freed up. It's never gonna be easy, guys. <laughs> Is it ever? There it goes, there it goes. Just need to, to manhandle it a little bit in order to get it to uh, release. There it goes. There it is, all right. So there's these slides down the two sides, which normally is all you need to lock it in. Uh, but they felt the need to put some of this foam on there and that complicated things. All right, so I'm gonna take the bezel off. All right, and gosh, geez, this foam is just an absolute nightmare. 
So the cool thing about these devices is that they're usually pretty easy to open up and look inside. But I've got all this foam in here. And I gotta clear out the foam. There's these two little ears right here. I'm try and be very careful with them. This is not salvageable. This whole device is changed out as a component. And right here, Love Controls, the TSWB XXX, TSWB-40. That is the unit that I'd have to buy to get this back up and going. And the cool thing is, is these uh, temperature controllers or logic controllers, they're kind of generic. So it's an off the shelf type of part usually, which means that this is gonna be a repairable item. I don't, I don't even need to go to the OEM necessarily, but the OEM might have it programmed specifically to a, a temperature or something. So that's something to be aware of. Oh, I, I guess I'll just, let's go ahead and just break it. It's not repairable. There we go. Yep, so this guy, um, what happened is I put in the two amp fuse and when I put in the two amp fuse, it started letting out the magical smoke. This is a technique called chasing smoke. And when you don't know what's causing a fuse to pop, I'm not saying this is the correct thing to do, but you can in some situations, especially if you don't know if the device is ever gonna go back into service, you can go through and put a larger fuse in and just be aware that's only for troubleshooting purposes. And something will catch on fire because a fuse is there on purpose. Oh, shoot. There it goes. So the fuse is there on purpose to be the, the weak link. All right. Come on. And this guy is just fighting me and it's so brittle. The plastic is so brittle on this guy. Come on. Normally these guys kind of open right up, but when I let the smoke out, it, um, well, I think it got a little hot and because it got hot, it's now being a little pain in the butt. So this rear case should just slide right off and it's not. Here we go. It's already broke, right? There, there we go. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Let's clean it up just a little bit. So I can see right here, I have a semiconductor. And here is my bridge rectifier. And I have a, a resistor here, which clearly uh, just smoked itself. There's a little transformer down here, which is probably gonna be a step down transformer or a filter. Hmm. I can't see it without uh, pulling this board off. But um, yeah, so right here, this little board right here actually creates the DC power, which powers this thing. And this little tiny board right here is actually what let the smoke out. All right, guys, so I'm gonna bring my microscope on in. Let's go ahead and turn it on so I can show you guys right up close and personal what's going on. Okay. So you can see the resistor right there, definitely having a, a bad day. And this right here is a bridge rectifier. You can see it. Uh, so the AC is on the left side. You get the plus and minus on the right side. That guy, as far as I can tell, did not fail. But over here, this, this guy here is probably a power regulator. And it just cooked. You can see what happened. So right here is the display. This over here is going to be your simple computer. It's got a relay. So this right here is going to be your main switch. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and bend this out of the way because who cares? And let's see, what do we got down here? I've got a large capacitor right here and I think that this one here is gonna be a power regulator as well. Let's see, what is that guy, ST? So it's a L7805CV. 
I would almost think that this guy's a power regulator as well since it's right here by the capacitor. So anyway, this guy here can take AC or DC power in. If you run DC through a bridge rectifier, it's just gonna be DC out because all it is is um, opposing diodes in there. And this guy here would, so it goes, the 24 volt AC comes in here. Um, it's going to be rectified into DC. That's why you have the cap on that side. This guy here should be stepping down the DC to a certain level that's usable by the CPU. And you can actually see the CPU on the back side of that board right there. And you've got a, another controller over here. And let's see, anything underneath? Well, can't really tell anything on the bottom side. Can I just force it? Sorry, it broke. There we go. Let me just snip it off. So the res resistor goes down to the bottom plane over to the relay. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Uh-oh. I don't know how I feel about this, guys, because the resistor is on the output side, which goes over to the relay. But it fires off the relay because it's right here on the relay contacts. You see right here? So it's directly connected to here. Huh. Okay, well you can see uh, much better uh, the transformer that's on the bottom. That is uh, just an inductor for the um, power phase. So you got the cap and then the inductor. I can see it much better now. Okay. Well, um, shitty. Okay, so it is a gamble to go ahead and just change this guy out. Just change out the entire module. I would be changing it out with another one of these guys. The TSWB-040. And I guess we'll see where it goes from there. Because if there is another short, I just, I'm, I'm really kind of confused why the relay is popping it right there. The relay itself doesn't look like it's heat damaged. Most of these relays, you can just pop the cover off. No, this guy, this guy is sealed better than most of them. Ah, oh well. So anyway, yeah, it appears to be a short for here. Tell you what. We can go ahead and test that semiconductor to see if that is gonna be the problem. In order to do this, I'm going to use my solder sucker gun. And I'm gonna remove this guy right here. And see if that's what the problem is. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove that guy and see what's up. The uh, hot air station or the solder sucker it's all warming up as we speak and while i'm at it i might as well remove that bridge rectifier right there and let's see if it's shorted which should be kind of an easy thing to determine okay so there's that one that's my rectifier ta-da and let's see this guy here i'm assuming is a power regulator since it's right here on the DC power circuit. Let's go ahead and switch cameras and uh, continue on. All right, so let's see. I've got my multimeter here, which I'm currently also using to do temperature check, which is why it's on a, a different uh, setting. Let's go ahead and do continuity. So remember, uh, semiconductors usually fail in a short, so let's see what's going on. 
guy here is open. So it's kind of hard to tell at the moment because um, this little semiconductor here, don't really know what's going on with him. It appears to be open, open, like it's not registering anything whatsoever on my meter. And, okay. So this is my bridge. And it appears that it is wide open as well. Oh, there. Okay, let's reverse them. Nope. All right, so let's see. And for this one here, I'm going to whip out my semiconductor tester. This is the Atlas DCA55. So it's analyzing this little guy right here, common cathode diode network. All right, and then it goes through all the things that it sees about this uh, semiconductor. So let's hook it up to the unknown unit. And it will tell me what it thinks it is. PNP Darlington transistor. Okay. And then we can scroll through it. So uh, collector base emitter, it gives you the pinout. It says diode protection between collector and emitter. Okay, so this one is actually good. Resistor shunt between uh, base and emitter. Not accurate due to, okay. Current gain. So it's going through all the settings of this guy here. So what really happened is my meter's not showing anything because it doesn't output enough voltage to do anything. If I remember correctly, this guy here has a step up transformer in it and, uh, or a step up circuit, and it steps it up to about 10 or 12 volts. So that's why it can uh, test semiconductors much more accurately than a meter. But your meter will definitely show you a short if it's a short, no matter what. So le leakage current is nothing. Okay, and then it goes back to square. All right, so now what we can do is we've got our little guy down here. Let's see if it detects. So I'm on the AC side of my uh, bridge rectifier. See, no comb. Okay, let's test it this way. So it should show a diode. Yep, common cathode diode network. Okay, scroll. Point for D1. Okay, anode and cathode. So it does detect something on that side, so I can switch it over. And let's test. Common anode, see, uh, it is figuring it out. So my bridge rectifier here is good. Yep, okay. Now I don't know if it's out of spec. Um, I'd have to look at the data sheet for that, but it is in fact showing a diode network. So it does know that something's there. So this one here, the Darlington pair, it's good. Now I'm kind of worried about the output side of this guy. So let's go ahead and test across this, uh, Okay, we get 358 ohms across the uh, relay. Huh. All right, uh, now I'm maybe a little worried. So the reason I'm worried is because ah, the relay is pulling too much current. And the relay pulling too much current, I think is what fried it. So if I change out this box, there's a good chance that the next box I throw in there is also going to cook. Although uh, it won't cook, or it shouldn't, with the half half an amp fuse that was in there. Uh, 
hopefully not. Tell you what, let's let's test the outputs for right here. Nothing. 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 So I'm testing for a short to any of these other pins. And I got no short to any of the other pins. Ooh. -oh. Okay. Well, guys, it's a risk. Maybe we'll just decommission this unit and uh, throw it out. Hard to say. I'll leave that up to the customer. But um, if they want, I'll price out one of these uh, control modules, which it is an over-the-shelf part. We just got to program it at what temperature we want it set as. There's a good chance if we get this guy from the OEM that it will become pre-configured with a set temperature. So that is the one luxury you get from buying it from the OEM. Anyway, guys, a uh, little bit of a deep dive into a temperature control module. It is an over-the-shelf part. We can find them all over the place, and they're in all sorts of things. Thermal cabinets, you find them in water baths. You find these guys in sometimes refrigerators and freezers. These little modules right here are everywhere, and it's almost like a standard part. But um, as you see, they do go bad, and when they go bad, it lets out the magic smoke, and now my shop smells horrible right now. <laughs> so anyway, guys, hope you like this video, and if you do, please give me a thumbs up, and uh, stay tuned because I'm going to have many more cool videos coming up soon.